Well, they don't make exhausts like they used to. This is an old exhaust, maybe 70s and 80s, and this is a newer exhaust, and that's a good thing, because look at that, this thing is huge, versus that, man, there's nothing there. But what happens when the exhaust actually collapse or you don't get any airflow through it? Welcome to this AMS Oil Tech Tip. We're talking about exhaust systems and testing back pressure. In order to do that, let's look at the exhaust system. It all starts up there at the engine, runs through a catalytic converter, a muffler, and out a tailpipe. And here's a tech tip for you. If you're ever going to do any exhaust work, just go get some of this MP from AMS Oil, put it on the bolts a couple hours before. You're not going to have any, any problem removing them. If you don't, good chance you're going to shear off some bolts. Now, what happens if it starts to get clogged up? Well, you can do a couple of tests. You can do a pyrometer, and a pyrometer test is basically just shooting for temperature. Let's say hypothetical number 100, 100, 2, 3, 4, and 100. Well, we went up to 400, and then 100 on the other side, that's where the restriction occurred. You can also run a back pressure test with a back pressure gauge. What is that? Well, you pull the oxygen sensor out, once you do that, you're going to take a back pressure gauge and you're going to go ahead and put it in the exhaust stream. Once they start up the car, well, your back pressure gauge is going to read. You want any less than about three PSI of pressure while you're driving. Here's one with excessive back pressure right there. You can see it. Now you can run one other test called a vacuum test. Make sure it's past the throttle plates and you have a good vacuum source. Then you want to go ahead and start the car once again. Take a vacuum gauge reading. If it slowly starts to drop to zero, well, you can't get it out if you can't get it in. So you're going to start to lose vacuum. But it all revolves around this blow-by. Once that thing's pressurized, Len, I'm crudding up the oil. It's all getting down in there, man. Help us out. Yeah, exactly. When, when that occurs, then you're getting that pressure in that cylinder and you're getting combustion and all different kinds of things around those rings. And that can create deposits and that can make the problem even worse. So the oil has to be designed to handle that. Now it is to a certain degree, soot, carbon, different things like that go in the oil anyway, and the dispersant package handles that. It keeps it suspended. Once it goes through the filter, drops it off in the filter, goes back to pick some more up. The other side of that is you wanna make sure that the oil can take those temperatures. So you wanna have you know really, really good base oils to start with so it can handle the high temperatures. Now, you guys, keep the questions coming. We always get the questions in the comments, and one of them is my oil turns black pretty quickly after I start the car. Is that a bad thing? No, the oil turning black just tells you that the oil is doing its job. As I said earlier, that's what it's supposed to do is pick up the carbon, pick up the soot, drop it off in the oil filter. Every vehicle is going to have a little bit of blow-by, and fluids don't last forever. So just go to amsoil.com and check out their whole line of great products.